What is happening, Blades? And welcome back to the most unorganised Blades Ramble you will ever, ever see. So this is the warm-up. I am now finally back from my daughter's football practice after getting stuck in traffic, so apologies. Tuesday night's never good for me. Why are we playing on a Thursday night? Ridiculous. Forrester three nil up. Everything's going wrong. Ugh. So this is the warm-up. Thank you for joining us. It's a fair bit happened-ish. I know we only recently spoke, but can you hear me all right? Let me know, because I've just thrown this all together really quickly. Um, so thank you for joining me. Thank you to our sponsors. Our match preview sponsors for the warm-up are always Triple Point Brewery and Action Coach Sheffield, our main channel sponsor. So thank you to them for their support. A little bit of news recently. We've, uh, we're obviously building up to the Liverpool game on, um, uh, on Thursday night. We're also, we've also appointed somebody to our recruitment team, Jamie Hoyland, former Blade, boyhood Blade, has um, joined our recruitment team after spending several years at Everton. I think he's been working at West Ham for the last year or so, from what I understand. He's coming in straight away. There's been a little bit of confusion as to his role. He's going to play a key role in the recruitment team, and I think this is a really good appointment personally he's not going to be our head of recruitment our head of recruitment will be another appointment to come but this has been part of an extensive process that um that the club's undertaken to get it right we need to get it right next year absolutely crucial that we renew the right players we release the players that aren't going to take us forward and obviously then there's a huge rebuild to come so I think 99% of us are of the impression that that's going to be in the championship. The club don't believe so. Chris Wilder and Prince Abdullah are still very much holding out hope. I'm not saying they're deluded to the point where they don't think we'll be relegated, but they're certainly holding out hope that we can put some results together and give ourselves a real chance. And it makes you think, doesn't it? There's a couple of things that come with this. Are we going to look back on this season and regret it as such a missed opportunity? Because as, for as poor as we've been, as, and we have been atrocious, there is the keep becoming like chinks of light because of how poor the other teams are and stuff like point deductions as well. Rumours that Everton are going to get another five or six points. That's what's been going off in our group tonight. Forrester obviously pulling away slightly, but if we'd have kept up with... That, you know, held on to Bournemouth result, held on to Fulham result, then we'd we'd be really be within touching distance. So it's infuriating to think how close we could have been. Really, I think we're planning. We've got to plan for the championship, and the appointment of Jamie Hoyland is a good one. As I say, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It's caused a little bit of concern um, within the fan base because he's a blade and his mates were Wilder. And there's some concerns that it's a bit of an old boys club, a bit of a, why, have we just, are we just bringing in blades now? 
I'm I'm on record as being pleased about the Chef United connections to our club. And I've been criticised previously for saying stuff like we've got our club back when we appointed Chris Wilder. I still stand by that. I think that's it's a very blanket statement and it's it's unique to everybody. What does that mean? It means to me that we've, we're somewhere towards getting our identity back. Chris Wilder's talked a lot about the, the culture of the club being broken and he needs to bring it back together again. And I completely agree with that. And I think people that know the club and that understand what it means to work for Sheffield United, to play for Sheffield United, to to be involved with our club. I think it's it, it can't be lost in translation. And that I don't mean that in terms of like Slav or anything like that, but it cannot be lost on anybody what it means to, to play for Sheffield United and to represent this football club. So extensive work has gone into getting the right man for the job, not just because he's a pal of Wilders. That's not why he's been appointed. I'm sure the connection and the fact that they know that they know each other and they know how they can work together will help. But he's been appointed for his ability in recruitment. And as I say, he's not going to be, he's going to be one of the main players. But from what I understand, Jamie Hoyland's not going to be the main man in the recruitment department, which is good that we're adding seriously experienced, capable people into our recruitment team, which was in dire need of a shift, as was the medical department, which I understand as well is having a huge makeover or certainly improvements to that department, which we've all been waiting for as well. So there's a lot of exciting things to come behind the scenes. Um, plans that are in place are quite exciting, to be honest. And, and I think we can get into that probably when we have more time, because appreciate this is the warm-up and we only get half an hour for these uh, little lives before. There's not going to be a 90 after 90 after Liverpool because it's an evening game. That would mean we'd have to be doing it on the Friday night because otherwise it's going to be too late to do it. And by the time Friday rolls around, we'll be doing the warm-up for Chelsea. So what we'll do is we'll do a, a warm-up after Chelsea and we can talk about everything there. So, and maybe mention a bit of a roundup on Chelsea's warm-up game, if that makes sense. Speaking of warm-ups, I'm, I've been looking at, I've mentioned this to our ramblers today, been looking at how I can spice up the, this content for next season and what other ideas we're throwing out there. And we're going to do something called the Ramble Cup. And it's going to be, I'm going to take part, Andy the Blade's going to take part, and our Ramblers are going to take part. And we're all, there's three tiers, if you like, to being a Rambler. So there's the YouTube Ramblers, there's the Elite Ramblers, and there's the Platinum Ramblers, which you can find out all about if you if you go to Patreon and, and what have you. But we have representatives now from each each of those uh, tiers that will go up against each other and myself and my dad to do a Sheffield United prediction next season and we'll go into a league and it will be if you get the correct score if, so you predict Sheffield United to win and they win then you'll get a point for your team and if you predict the correct result 3-1 to Sheffield United believe it, believe it or not that may well happen next season then you get three points and we're going to go into a league and the winner at the end of the season wins the Ramble Cup. I appreciate it. it's not a cup competition, it's a league, but the Ramble Cup sounds better than the Ramblers League or whatever it's going to be. So that's just to sort of peek a little bit further into the future. Um, I'm going to jump into your comments now because I've, uh, I've rambled on myself. And as I said, we don't get too long for these things. Stevie Way, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday, pal. Hoping for a very unlikely win on Thursday. Happy birthday, mate. How, after there is no... Um, how, how, how old you are today? Because I'm, it's my birthday next week. I'm, I've got a milestone birthday coming up, twenty-one, on Wednesday next week. Happy birthday, Steve! In Blaze news though, with the training ground contracts getting sorted, Wilder out and about scouting people. Yeah, we're seeing at the Stoke Huddersfield game that we're putting our Ramblers chat as well. And his comments on being clear what we need and scouting players. Looks like we're getting sorted for next year already. It does, and it's positive, isn't it, pal? Really positive. With a little bit of his past history, I would be absolutely love it if Wilder could put a spannering clippity clops farewell. Uh, up the blades, up the ramble, I think. Please subscribe. Almost at 4K. Ian, you always do me an absolute solid with that. Yeah, we're something like 58 away from 4,000 subs. I know we were trying to get 5K before Christmas Day, but... You live and learn on YouTube, don't you? So it might be it might be next Christmas Day that we get there. 
be a nice little birthday present if we can do it, but it's a big ask now, isn't it, to get 58 subs before next Wednesday. Hardest game of the season, in my opinion, says Gaz. Hope we can somehow get something from the game, up the blades, up the ramble. Yeah, I agree, mate. I mean, we haven't even talked about Liverpool, have we yet? Absolutely formidable. Um, obviously leading the charge in the absolute throes of it with Man City. I'm going to chuck up now before I forget. I'm going to, oh, I told you, didn't I? Of course, we're sponsored by Action Coach Sheffield and Triple Point. But what's your team? And I think, for me, it's a pretty simple team uh, to pick this time. This is my team. Let me know how you're feeling. Ivo in goal. Mason Holgate, who, correct, I completely forgot about last time. Hands up, because he'd not played for us for so long and there'd been a three-week break. I'd left him out and I'd have played him as well in my side instead of Trusty. Anel, Jackie Longthrow, that's me back three. Bogle, just due to injury. I thought he played all right, to be fair, against Fulham. Uh, Bogle and Ozzy are my wing-backs. I'm having Blaster in the middle. No Vinny Souza. I want Andre Brooks on the left-hand side to balance out with him and Gus Hamer. And I don't see how you can drop with the fact that Archer's injured. Or even if he wasn't really, with the way these two played second half, Ollie McBurney playing deeper, like we've talked about before, behind Man on Fire, Ben Brewer and Diaz. So, another thing I wanted to touch on, and I will jump back into your comments, but another thing I wanted to touch on was Wilder's spiky comments um, about the subs. It was put to him today by Adam Oxley fairly as well. There's been some criticism about your substitutions um, against Fulham. And he basically said, Oli Arblaster can't, couldn't move. Neither could Vinny Souza. He were getting cramp. I've talked about these physical substitutions that we need to make. It's been a problem with the players all season. Next season, he'll make sure we've got a robust set of players that will be able to go for a full 90. Loved all that. So what we're saying, we're well, basically, would you rather have Oli Norwood on who can move than Oli Arblaster, who can't move. Well, in all honesty, I don't want Oli, Oli Norwood on, and that's nothing against Oli Norwood. He's gone past um, his best for me. I would rather have had Andre Brooks on. That that was the criticism, and I think Sarah pointed out on an official United video when he were talking in his presser, it wasn't the fact that he made the subs, it was the fact of who he brought on, and I understand there's a completely different issue with the level of quality on the bench that we haven't got. Let's be right, we haven't got a level of quality on the bench, but moving Aussie inside to midfield, like we talked about on um, 90 after 90, to, alongside Norwood, there was just no presence there at all. I mean, the, the total height must have been, you know, average height of that mid three. Gus Hamer, Ollie Norwood, Ben Osborne, what, five foot eight? It's not an intimidating thing for somebody like, you know, a, a seasoned veteran like Tom Kearney coming on and other players that they've got in midfield, Polina, who can just dominate you on the ball. It were meat, food and drink, whatever the, the saying is, for, for Fulham on, on Saturday. So I, I didn't agree with the subs, the, the personnel. That was the problem. Not the fact that um, he brought... Arblaster off, and certainly not the fact that he brought Vinny Souza off. Sometimes I'd rather play with 10 men, and I get that I can sometimes scapegoat players because I get so frustrated with their poor performance, but I thought he were absolutely shocking at the weekend, Vinny Souza. I can't, I, I can't get past it, to be honest. Anyway, before I go down that rabbit hole, I'm going to jump back into the comments. Andy, hope we get a result to make it three unbeaten, up the blades, up the ramp. Yes, mate, absolutely right. Could be a couple of minutes late starting, guys. Jimmy's even stuck in traffic. Thank you, Ian. That was true. I was. I was absolutely rushed back. You can probably tell I got a bit flustered at the start. Um, Luke, today's going from bad to worse. We need to beat we needed to beat Fulham, and unfortunately felt like we got robbed. Yeah, we you could just sense it, couldn't you? As soon as the fourth goal were chalked off and they went straight down to the other end to make it three two. Lad next to me says there's, there's only one way this is going. <laughs> it's not good. And we're right. Just don't want to be battered anymore between now and the end of the season. Nailed to finish, nailed on to finish 20th with results how they are. What's your expectations next season league-wise? I am I always try and be optimistic, pal. I always try to be optimistic. But from what I'm understanding, we're going to go for it next season. It's going to be a huge turnover, so it may need to take a bit of time. 
but we're, we're going to go for it is the noises I'm hearing out of the club. And and that's that's music to me is really because Chris and Prince Abdullah are absolutely on the same page. The, the understand what needs to be done. I think there'll be a big turnover, and this is a prediction rather than any sort of insider info. I think there'll be a big turnover in in players. Um, so there'll be a lot of new faces around, but I think we need that. We need a squad refresh and recruitment, getting recruitment right in this window. I, I don't disagree with Wilder that it's the most important window in the last nine, ten years at the club. Because it feels like we're starting a new era and building around players like Oli Arblaster. I'd like to see Brooks involved. You know, I'd love George Baldock to stay, but, you know, whether he can get over his fitness issues is is another thing, isn't it? Does Willa Sula have a big say in next season? That might not excite a lot of people, but others think he he's, could rip the championship to pieces the way he's um, developed in the Premier League. Got nothing to lose, especially with Burnley and Forest currently winning. Oh, Burnley winning as well. Set up an attack-minded game and go all out to cause upset and get a result. May cost them the title if we get the result, Jimmy, up the blitz. <laughs> yeah. We can't... Look, I'm not I'm not into the mindset of free hits. I can't... I can't... Oh, Wolves have equalised. It's half-time. It's 1-1 as we speak. Forest 3-1. Come on, Fulham. And Everton are 2-0 down at Newcastle. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. I still think we'll catch Burnley. I still think we'll catch Burnley. I do. I think we're a bit... Well, I don't, but I think we're more about us than than Burnley. Um, yeah, sorry, I was saying there was no such thing as a free hit, but we will... <laughs> Nobody expects us to get anything done. That's that's probably the best way to say it. I can see him starting Norwood to prove a point that he can still play. We'll be 5-0 down with two own goals from Norwood. I don't think he's in business of cutting his nose off to spite his face, Oli. I think he'll probably take on board the, the stick he's got. He'll know. He'll know that the, the calls are about Norwood. He's, he's not in the phase of playing players to send a message to the board to say, because he's done that before, you know, I'm playing him and I know he's not going to do the business for us, but I'm sending a message to the board to say we need better reinforcements. The board know we need reinforcements. Wilder knows who is and isn't good enough. So now it's just all hands to the pump. Play your best possible team. Try your best to get the result. If we, if it had been 4-1 and Ollie Norwood comes on, I don't think at 4-1 we're out of sight, aren't we? But as soon as they score and give themselves that impetus and then 14 minutes because up on board, it's only going one way. Hi, Jimmy, in your opinion, who's better, Archer or Ben Brown and Diaz? Oh, you're stitching me up here, pal. I can't... I, I think in terms of potential, I think Cameron Archer's the better finisher. But you cannot deny the current form in a very poor team of Ben Brown and Diaz. I'm delighted that we've been able to find a system that he can fit into rather than us building a system around his strengths. But somebody were mentioning the other day, he is a patchy striker. And that, that's not, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing because as long as we can keep this run of form going, we need to ride the wave. But he went something like 25 games last season without scoring a goal for Blackburn. So they do come in spells for him. Um, but I, that's not me pulling him down because I think he's been brilliant for us. People are asking, can we get him next season? I think it's very, very unlikely. Very unlikely, unfortunately. Can you find Jimmy up the ramble? Thank you, Doug. I'm glad because I've been going 20 minutes now and <laughs> if you couldn't, then I'd have been struggling. But thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Seen the latest news, West Ham and Villa interested in our blaster. Knew this would happen if we started playing him. The vultures are circling already. Hope his head doesn't turn 20 to 25 million sounded out. Okay, so our blaster knows he could have got a move, essentially, before he signed his deal. Because the, when he played, this interest came from his time at Port Vale when he were getting spotlighted and doing well for them. He's since come into the team for us and played, what, two or three games? That's not what's turn people's heads. They've been watching him for a while. As far as I understand, we've had no bids. I know that he's seen as a key part of our rebuild and we want to try and build a team around him. Don't get me wrong, like with any player, he will have a price. There's If we get 25 million slapped down on the table from Liverpool, then he'll go. It, particularly if it turns his head and he wants to go because he's, he's a young kid. Yes, he's a blade. But you can be a blade playing in Championship or you can be playing in Champions League for Liverpool. It's tempting. 
and you'll you'll quadruple your wages. So I'm not saying we will not sell Oli Arblaster by any means, in my opinion, but I don't think we will. I don't think we will because I know how well thought of he is. Sarah, I hope Wilders listened and learned from the last game. I hope we go for it. No sitting back. Let's go, Blades. Love that, Sarah. Love that. Porcupine Pig. Liverpool 10. Is that 1 billion? I can't count the zeros. Sheffield. See, this isn't a blade, is it? This isn't a blade. Even a blade would, would come on with a, a quip like this, to be fair, but they would not call it Sheffield. Any truth about coloured boots going to hearts? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. I, I think I think he might re-sign. I think he might re-sign. I don't know anything. These are just my opinions. If I if I do get to know anything, then I'll tell you it's it's what I've heard or it's what I believe is going to happen. This is just my opinion. I think he'll re-sign for us, but that's not guaranteed. And I think if we can find him a partner that works well with him, like Brereton Diaz does, like Illiman and Dai did, and these are two outstanding players, by the way, and Dai and Brereton Diaz and Dai especially, then we, it can work well. I think I think he's much better deeper. Me and my dad have been saying it for so long. Much better deeper where he can come and link up play, win headers for flick-ons. So I won't mind him re-signing. I think he might, but we'll see. Can you honestly see him as winning a lot of games next year under Wilder? Yes, I can. It's been a couple of years since he's won a game regularly. My gut feeling is he won't be manager this time next year. Well, it won't be if we're not in the mix um, because we are going for it. That's what I've been told is that we are serious about next season. We want to bounce back at the first time of asking and Chris Wilder is the man that's going to spearhead us as there. So, yeah, if we're 18th in the league, and Wilder will know this, Wilder will tell you this himself, if we're 18th in the league this time next year, it won't last long. But I'll, I'll be absolutely shocked. That I think we've needed, some, I know I touched on it earlier, I think we've needed somebody to come in and, and sew us back together again as a football club and instill a culture in us. The time is right for Chris Wilder to be the man at the helm. I think in his first stint, a lot of us felt, me included, that we were lucky to have him and that we might lose him. And now I feel it's much more of an, on an even keel. He's lucky to be here as much as we're lucky to have him. So, And some will think that and some will think that. So it's mutually beneficial for both parties for him to be here so long as it, it continues to push the club forward. And there'll be a lot of things that come out, that already have come out about the training ground, about the academy that the club are doing and to try and push us forward. The overhaul to the recruitment staff, the over, the upcoming overhaul to the uh, medical staff that are going in the right direction. And there'll be more things that come out over the summer that demonstrate that we're moving forward as a football club. So as poorly as it's going on the pitch, it finally feels to me, and this again is just my opinion, like we're starting to get it right off the pitch, which is all we can ask for at this stage. Also, Blades are currently in talks to keep Berrett and Diaz for next season, along with an option to buy it if we come back up. We, we may be in talks about it, but what has he got? Four goals in the last five games in the Premier League? He'll, be, he'll play in Premier League next season, I think. If he's playing in England, it'll be Premier League. He might end up playing in La Liga for Villarreal. You know, he's... He's going to be sought after, isn't he? After his, his shining performances for us. Missed opportunity, says Gaz. In my opinion, due to the amount of results we've thrown away in the latter moments and matches. Yeah, like we touched on in 90 after 90. It's been shocking, hasn't it? Those throwaways. It's not being fit enough. The fitness team need a real clear out. Jamie Ireland appointment is a good move. May bring back, maybe bring back Billy. Do you mean on, as part of the coaching setup? I always think it's... See, that would be a sentimental appointment, wouldn't it? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because he might be great for the changing room. But I'd only bring back Billy if he's an improvement on the coaching staff that we've currently got. Maybe in academy, maybe that works. There were a lot of talk about Jags coming back in. Well, if Jags is going to be, become an elite coach or we see those qualities in him, then bring him in. But not just because he's a blade and he's affi you know, affiliated to the club. Add a like, says Danny. Top man. And a subscribe. Get us up to that 4K if we can. Gone to get Ender Stevens back <laughs> no, at Stoke. No, thanks. Bless Ender Stevens did a great job, job with us. But he's, no, he's, we're moving on, aren't we? We're evolving. Like your lineup, no whining Vinny yet. Yeah, for those that haven't seen it, let me see if I can get that back up again. This is my lineup for 
Liverpool. I've got Chris's comment on there, so I'll try and get rid of that so you can see the full team. What do we reckon? Ivo, Holgate, Anel, Jackie Longthrow, Bogle and Ozzy at wing back. Gus and Brooksy balancing each other out. We are Blaster in the middle, holding it all together. And Oli Mack, deep of Ben Brewer and Diaz. I think that's a good team, me. I think that's a good team. Um, our, blast, our Blaster couldn't move, but jogged off. <laughs> I know. I know. It's one of them, isn't it? Danny agrees. Uh, we know Vinny in the team. Wasn't the fact that Wilder took players off. It was the ones he brought on that was the reason why fans were complaining. Yeah, Trusty as well. I don't know what's happened to Trusty. It seems to have gone backwards and it, it must be a confidence thing. And it's it's a shame to see. He's certainly not a left wing back. I think we tried playing him as like a, a deep left wing back or even a left back as we tried to hold on to the win with five across the back. And him against Adama Traore, we were just getting absolutely done every time. Unbelievable. Devil's advocate on the subs front at Fulham. Can Brooks sit at the base of a midfield and shield? Not saying Norwood can either at this level, but maybe would have been throwing Andre into a lion's den. No, we haven't got the personnel built, but I would have said sit Norwood deep, as deep as you can, so he's not chasing people, and then make sure, if you know that he's not got the legs, get Brooks and Gus closer to him. At least have him buzzing around in terms of, so they can then cover rather than defenders coming out of position to try and, it just, you're, you're right, you're right, we haven't got the personnel to do it, but it it wasn't the answer, was it? I'd, I'd rather I'd, I'd Brooks on, I don't know, I don't know who else you could, because there were no Tom Davis, Tom Davis is injured, it's, was Slimani on bench? I'd rather I'd, just fresh legs. You know, some, someone even suggested, and I wouldn't have been against this either, bring in Bogle into midfield, and Sam Curtis on it, right wing back. It's a little bit out there, but Bogle might do okay in midfield. We don't know. Would be classic United to go on a huge run and go down by one point. Yeah, absolutely it would. Absolutely it would. Bottom three are all down if the results stay as they are. Yeah, that were at 8.49. So um, let's have a look what scores are. I'm gonna... Yeah, okay, they're back kicking off, but it's still 1 1. Okay, that's all right. On about the subs, I don't buy that if McBurney was done, he could sit in defence and run three yards to the ball from corners the next season. I think we'll struggle with 90% of the new team first season. I don't think McBurney could be a defender either. It's not just about heading, heading the ball, is it? Let's be right. After catch Burnley now, if nothing else, than a bit of revenge. No way are they a 5-0 better team than us after avenge that particular disaster. Absolutely right we do. And we will, I think. I think we will. So glad Jamie's come on board. He knows the club and what it means to the fans. Hopefully it'll be the same the director of football if it happens we're not going down that route Bri we're going to get a head of recruitment to go above or work alongside I'll just yeah Jamie's going to be like the assistant to the head of recruitment I believe but a big part of the recruitment team from what I understand the head of recruitment that we've identified has to work a notice period so we knew we could get Jamie now so it's important that, that he came in and sort of started steering the ship um not related, but do you think the pigs will go down? Still got a feeling they'll scrape up. I think they'll scrape out of it, to be honest. Not that I care. Just don't want to play play for them. Uh, play against them, sorry. Where's Andy the Blade? He needs to come on the channel, give his opinion. What a legend. <laughs> he is an absolute legend. Um, he could be on every, every ramble for me. He just, he thinks, leave the people wanting more. <laughs> I'll call you out on it. I'll call you out. No, it's just his excuse so he doesn't have to come on regular. Um, main thing for me, Jimmy, next season is getting a strong bench. Many Tuesday, Saturday games next season and need a big squad for injuries. Yeah, and I think five loans will help us with that. So we'll be able to pad out the squad with some decent quality. But we need some younger permanent stars. Souza, the star boy from Brazil. Absolutely right. How he's not getting in that Brazil team when he passes ball out of play so neatly like he did. Unbelievable. I'd re-sign McBurney purely because we don't have any contract to senior strikers currently. Bar Brewster, and then the most expensive to purchase. Yeah, I agree, Bean. Somebody was saying, I think it were in chat today, in Ramble chat, who do you replace him with? Who, you know, for on a free, you're not going to get the same level, are you? I'm not saying he's absolute quality. We've seen it in spurts, like at the weekend, for 35 minutes. But you're not going to get like for like, are you? We're going to lose out on a lot of money, potentially, if we don't re-sign him. Four years younger than you, pal, so it's my 17th birthday. <laughs> Happy 17th, pal. 
Hey, Jimmy, sneaky 1-0 win to end Liverpool's Premier League hopes up the Ramble. Top man, I, I would love that. Would love that. Can't see it, but I'd love it. Vinny Souza, not from Brazil. He's called Alan from Cleethorpe. <laughs> it looked like it that weekend. Nice one, Andy. Billy agrees with me. I think that Bernie, new contract would be the cheapest option, probably. Who can you replace him with for less than the cost of a new deal? Absolutely right. Completely agree. I'm going to end it there. So I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to end on a score prediction. Do I go with my head? Do I go with my heart? I'm going to say 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, we're going to nick a point. <laughs> it, look, if 10-man Burnley can go to Stamford Bridge and get a point, we can get a point at Anfield. Stranger things have happened. Not much, but for now, come on, you red and white wizards. Subscribe to the Ramble and up the blades. Ramble on! Gustavo Hammer into the top corner. And by John Egan! John Egan! What a goal from George Baldwin!